And welcome back to NOLA Motorsports Park. This is Prep Recruiting Inside of PRI. I'm the coach of PRI, Rick Gailey, along with our Prep Recruiting Insider, Mr. Rene Nato. And for the Lamarck Ford Legend of the Game, it is a special, exciting honor for me to introduce Corey Webster to you, formerly of St. James High School, when I was coaching there, the LSU Tigers and the New York Giants. He is a true Lamarck Ford legend of the game. Go see the Lamarck brothers at the big store on Williams Boulevard. Go see one of the Lamarck brothers, Dennis, Timmy, Tommy, or Ronnie, and they'll put you in the car that is best suited for your needs. That's what they specialize in doing. Here at NOLA Motorsports Park, Corey, it is, I'm just so excited to have you here today. We, we had a lot of great times together, not just with you as a player, but your sisters transferring to St. James, uh, one of the first families to come back when I first started coaching there, and your mom and dad being, so what, what, a, what a great story that is at St. James. Thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. Well, Corey, it's so much to talk to you about Super Bowls, All-Americans. In fact, there were 66 All-Americans at LSU, 11 two-time All-Americans, and you're one of them. Wow. <laughs> you know, when you were recruited by Nick Saban as a wide receiver, he said that he saw some your basketball skills that would translate into being a cornerback. I want to ask you a question. This is a recruiting show. Can you tell us some, how the recruiting process went in football, but you averaged over 20 points a game all district, district MVP in basketball. You had a chance to play basketball as well, so talk about those two, football recruiting and what was the options as a basketball player? Um, uh, football, you know, obviously the story is, you know, here now, but um, basketball, you know, Coach Saban never came to a football game. If you remember down in St. James, he came to all our basketball games, so um, he was able to see some of the things that I did on the basketball court and like the way they, um, they translate with the, um, you know, the, the quick hips and being agile on your feet and stuff like that to the to the, um, the cornerback position. Um, he stopped me off at receiver, but didn't give me an option, you know, to be able to translate to the um, the cornerback position, but um, I was able to get, you know, recruited by a few different teams and be able to play basketball. A couple of teams were going to allow me to play both, like the Southern Mississippi's, um, Nebraska. Um, also got a couple of calls from UMass and John. I, I don't want to lie to you at the time. I don't want to mistake. I forget who the coach was at the time, but I um, went up there and visited those guys as well. Um, there was a couple of teams that were interested. LSU actually, um, for a time, when Coach John Brady was the coach. He was going to allow us to play both, just that we couldn't work it out and um, end up just playing football. And one of the things that he could see was your leadership potential on the basketball court. You can't always see that in football with the number of players and being so far away. Uh, but at St. James, led the team to a state championship, had, had, a, had a good bunch of players, not, not, not great players, but a, a really neat group. And, uh, and tell us about winning a state championship in basketball. Well, you know, we had a, um, you know, it was a senior season. We had a lot of things going on that senior season, so it was good to be able to get that group of guys to come together and, um, you know, in jail for the goal at the end. Um, you know, we had a chance to, um, I think we went 26 and 24 and 6 that season, you know what I mean? So, um, never had happened before at St. James, so it was a blessing to be able to, you know, like I said, pull together all guys, focusing in on one goal and be able to bring a championship to St. James. And you made the big assist at the end of the game to <laughs> yes, beat St. Bernard. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Being able to, you know, trusting your teammates, give it off, and I think it was Stevenson Jones at the time, yeah. finished it up with um, two points and won the game. Now, Corey, you judge, a lot of people judge, uh, and the right way to judge a cornerback on when he's tested how he steps up. You are the all-time leader at LSU in pass breakups with 62, and you had 32 in one year. Was a lot of that film study that you knew what the receiver was doing, or was it a lot of that natural instincts to you? No, no, I can't just say natural instincts. I was blessed. Um, I thank God for giving me some, you know, good talent, but a lot of that was film studies. Uh, most of the time, we knew exactly where we were supposed to be at the time, and um, that made everything a lot easier for us. Um, it slowed the game down for us, and Coach Saban did a good job. Well, I was a quarterback, so before I got there, I had a guy sitting on your right did a great job of teaching <laughs> me how to study film and being able to, um, you know, see defense and coverages like that, and all that translate over um, to my my defensive back position and I was able to you know do the same thing there you know what I mean kept ten tips and tendencies to be able to get close to the receivers and make plays on the ball and when I think about you Corey I not only think of preparation but also dependability yes, and, and responsibility as well and when I look back uh, at you going through the recruiting process you did not sign on yes, on the national letter day 
Uh, in fact, there was one Saturday you were supposed to be at LSU, <laughs> and you didn't show up. Yes, sir. And, uh, but it was it, you, you had you had a plan in mind, and I remember talking to Coach Saban for 45 minutes trying to find where you were, <laughs> and then his wife called yes, me. Talk, yes, that's the longest I've ever talked to, to Saban's in my life <laughs> for an hour and a half. But you really had a plan in mind and a vision in line, not just for your football playing, but the entire recruiting process. And as this is a recruiting show, talk about uh, the time that you took to make sure that LSU was the right choice. Yeah, um, I was the last guy to actually sign um, in my letter commit to go to LSU. Um, they was patient with me, Coach Saban, you know, really let me, you know, make a decision. And I thought um, it wasn't just a four-year decision that we was making. You know, it was a forty-year decision. That's what we like to t think about it. Um, we had these good conversations. Once my dad knew I was coming here, he talked about how many times Coach came and visited him <laughs> um, and waking him up. You know, getting ready for his work and preparation like that. Um, you know, to get my decision right. But um, it's good for a guy. You know, to weigh all his options. You know what I mean? And I had, you know, basketball options as well. But, um, you know, just to be able to know what he want to do, not just um, for the next four years of his life, but how he can make, um, you know, the, a life, 40 years, you know, down the line for his family and everything like that. So um, for any guy that's, you know, I always want to tell him to make a 40-year decision and not a four-year decision, and that's what I did. You had uh, an opportunity to play with BCS National Championship 2003 with LSU and also a couple of Super Bowls, 42 and 46, against a team that most people think might be one of the best all time against the New England Patriots. And that 46 National Championship uh, Super Bowl year, Corey, you had six interceptions which led the team. Uh, that was a very, very special time. And those teams you played with, the Giants, with Eli, one of them was that David Tyree catch yes, in a Super Bowl. <laughs> those were very special teams. Very. I mean, um, and like I said, it was just like those, you know, championships game at St. James for me, you know what I mean? It's a bunch of men coming together for one goal, being selfless, and uh, we was able to accomplish that, and um, we did it on a couple of times, and it's, I can't, you know, a lot of people say, which one's better, the high school, the college, or um, the Super Bowls, and they, they all equally as good, you know what I mean? It was separate people coming together to, you know, get that goal, but um, it's all a blessing. <laughs> and looking back, uh, I very often look back at the 2007 Super Bowl, uh, especially, because uh, people, uh, need to remember yes, uh, the foursome of receivers that you went up against. And that was really the turnaround when you look at what well, the common thread in 2007 and 2011, the strings uh, of coverage that you had that allowed the front to get to the quarterback. But in 2007, you all beat the Bucks in the first round. You covered Joey yes, Galloway man to man all over the field. Yes, sir. The next week you go to Dallas, beat Dallas, cover Terrell Owens all over the field, both sides. Beat Green Bay the next week where you intercept Favre in overtime, Donald Driver mm -hmm. the whole game, and then Randy Moss in the Super Bowl. That was really one of the key points. That was one of the great cornerback runs to me in history was that 2007 season, but it all goes back to the preparation, doesn't yes, it? Yes, sir. It all goes back to preparation. And earlier that season, I started that season, but was taken out of the starting lineup. Um, so just to be able to stay focused and keep grinding and working on my craft and um, having the coach um, at the time, it was Spagnola, believe in me. He said, um, you know, it's time for you to go. You know what I mean? I wasn't starting the, um, the week right before the playoff, and he was like, you have Joey Galloway all over the field. Imano, Imano, wherever he go, you go. So um, like you talked about being dependable and responsible. I love those words right there. Those big words, and I, I try to pride myself on them, but um, that's what he came in. He said, that's your response. I need you to, you know, shut the opposing team's best receiver down. And, um, you know, as a cornerback, you live up for those challenges and stuff like that. And I uh, went out there and I wanted to just do good for my team and put them in a position to be able to be successful. And, you know, the rest is history. Corey, this is a recruiting show, and a lot of recruits have been on this show. A lot of males and females uh, watch this show. What message would you have for if you were going through the process now, having been through it? What would a recruit look for? What's the questions they need to ask? And, and what's most important in this process? Well, I think it's all, it's all about the recruit, you know what I mean? Getting as much information as possible to prepare yourself to make a good decision. Um, ultimately, it's, it's, it's their decision. So I know a lot of parents and, you know, they have a lot of people around the athletes now. But ultimately, it has to be your decision because you have to live with that decision. And um, I can tell you, my daddy was leading a little further to Nebraska at the time. And um, I had to make a decision for myself. And I would tell every recruit, you know, make a decision for yourself. Be selfless. Know that it's not only a four-year commitment, it's a 40-year commitment, and it can change your life. And y your parents have been so so uh, influential, not yes, only in your, in your life, your sister's life, who played at St. James yes, as well. And he was a chief quarterback yes, uh, of the Booster Club, and your mother 
uh, worked at the school for years and years. Talk about the influence that both of them had. They allowed you to be who you are, but yet there was always that guiding light. Always the guiding light. Um, hats off to them. I appreciate everything they did for me. Um, just to be able to let me, um, expose me to the different things that they exposed me to, um, the different lessons that they gave me. And, um, you know, I just wanted to make them proud. And um, I went out there every day just to try. And it, I wasn't perfect, you know what I mean? It was always a work in progress, but I just wanted to make those, um, my parents proud. And, you know, that's why I ended up going back for my senior year, graduating from LSU. And um, like I said, um, it's just a blessing, you know, they put a smile on your mama face, not only um, by career-wise, but, you know, also, you know, getting your education and stuff like that as well. Now you, you know, even though you've played nine years, two Super Bowls, you've gone back to school to get your yes, master's. <laughs> that education is real important, yes, isn't it? I would tell every kid, man, education is the key to success. Um, you know what I mean? And um, just knowing, you know, where you're going, what you've been through, and um, you know, knowing everything about the game. You know what I mean? Being a complete student athlete. That's what I would tell every kid. You got to be the complete student athlete. And I think when I decided to be the complete student athlete, I didn't only get well on the field, but my um, my grades got better. Everything picked up, and um, I think that made me a better person. And now that you're retired from the league, you're continuing to do good works yes, at the Corey Webster Foundation. Yes, sir. Talk about how important that is to you now and what's, uh, what, what's involved in that. Well, I think everything that we did, it was, um, you know, had to be selfless. And I think, you know, serving the community is, is so important. Um, trying to invest in the generation that comes behind us and making the world a, a much better place than I found it. And, um, you know, God has blessed me tremendously with a platform, and I want to be able to use that platform in a positive way to reach um, generations and make this world a better place so they don't have to go through the same mistakes that I have made. They can learn from my experience or um, learn from experience that I have gathered over the years and I want to be able to tell those stories to them and that's what we're doing with the Corey Webster Foundation, you know, mentoring, um, different things like that, um, reaching out to the community in any way that we can. We want to be accessible to them. I don't want to think that they can't touch me and be hands-on to me. I want them to be able to touch me um, and I think that's so important for everybody to do. And that's Corey Webster, St. James, LSU, New York Giants and our Corey Webster Foundation. Thank you for being here with us, Corey. A true Lamarck Ford legend of the game. What a great example that he is, not only for youth, but for us as old people as well. <laughs> Thank you for being here today, Corey. We're here at Nolan Motorsports Park in the Carding Lounge, a fantastic facility that deserves your attention. We're gonna be right back after this timeout.